I have been devoted to mastering AWS for nearly 10 years. I've solved all kinds of problems with it. I've got all kinds of certifications around it, with the most recent one being the AWS Cloud Security Specialty just last week. So I caught myself thinking, what's next? And after some reflection, I decided to set my eyes on a new horizon, Microsoft's own cloud solution, Microsoft Azure. And I would love it if you join me in this exciting journey. Subscribe to the channel to follow along as I document my progress as a novice in Azure. Even if Azure is not your thing, subscribe anyway, because in this channel, we try to get you closer to working in the cloud one video at a time, because AWS will always be my bread and butter, so that's not going anywhere, and because that's guaranteed to put a smile on my face. As I was looking for some projects I could deploy on Azure, because you know that's how I like to approach learning a new thing, just find the new projects and then get your hands dirty. A few VS Code extensions came in very, very handy. So I documented them with the goal of sharing with you the top five VS Code extensions that definitely helps me get up to speed in this endeavor. But first, what are VS Code extensions? Now, these are additional pieces of software that can add new functionality and features to the editor. By installing the right extension, you can customize VS Code to fit your specific needs as a cloud engineer, as a copywriter, as a designer. So without further ado, here are the top five VS Code extensions that I believe every cloud engineer working with Azure should use. First on the list, Azure account. Now, after installing this extension, I was able to easily manage my Azure subscription and resources within VS Code. I could sign in to my Azure accounts, for example. I could switch between subscriptions. I could even create new resources without leaving the editor. This is not an extension, actually, that offers a ton of functionality, but it just it fulfills its promise of being a bridge between your Azure account and your code editor. And that's why I think it's a must have for anyone working with Azure. Second one on the list, Azure Tools. Now, this extension is a game changer for cloud engineers, offering a seamless way to interact with your Azure account from within your beloved IDE. I was actually able to manage and monitor Azure resources such as virtual machines, serverless functions, and databases. And I loved how, using this extension, I was able to streamline the deployment and debugging of said resources. As a beginner, I was getting a ton of value from this extension, and I couldn't help noticing how it looked suspiciously similar to the AWS Toolkit extension, albeit with a cleaner UX and ability to actually create resources from within the IDE, something that the AWS Toolkit extension only recently started doing and it's still not really optimized. See, I like to use my IDE for everything when I'm writing code because if I have to open the browser, God forbid, then I'm going to be distracted for sure. There's Twitter, there's LinkedIn, there's comments, there's emails. So an extension like Azure Tools is a must for any cloud engineer looking to elevate their workflow and boost their productivity. And next is the ARM template visualizer. But let's take a step back first and let me explain what ARM ARM is. Now, ARM stands for Azure Resources Manager, and it's the equivalent, if you will, of AWS CloudFormation. At least that's how I'm approaching it for now. So you create an ARM template, which are similar, as you must have guessed it, to AWS CloudFormation templates. Through these templates, ARM provides an easy way to create, manage one or more Azure resources consistently and repeatedly in an orderly and predictable manner. If you like to compare both CloudFormation and ARM, I've included the comparison table. So just pause the video right now and take your time going through it. From the project's examples I've been trying out, the ARM template JSON syntax did not sit right with me. And maybe I'm just, you know, still too used to CloudFormation templates written in YAML, but I found myself looking for a better way to visualize these templates. And that's when I found out about the ARM template visualizer extension. So you choose an ARM template, 
open it with the ARM template visualizer, and it does exactly that. It converts the JSON to a visual resource, helping you navigate the hundreds of lines of code, making it easier to understand the structure and relationships of the resources. But I actually wish it allowed me not only to visualize, but to edit the template as well. Sort of like what the uh, AWS step function constructor does. And this one also has a better UX. But I actually have a feeling that someone will correct me in the comments and point out to a maybe better extension that I'm just not aware of. All right, just before we go through the fifth and last extension on my list, let me first tell you about my upcoming course called SA Magic, an eight weeks accelerator program that will provide 10 IT professionals with everything they need to transition to the cloud solutions architecture role. Now there's an abundance of free content out there, sure, but free content is not always enough. Free content sometimes makes us feel overwhelmed, confused, because, you know, free content will tell you all the things that you need to do, all, all the things that you need to think about, but it can tell you the most important part, how to do it, because it's not personalized, it's not customized to your personal own need. And that's why I designed SA Magic lectures to be clear, to be concise, and to go straight to the point. You will learn to think like a solutions architect, to talk, write, and present like a solutions architect. You will learn how to approach problems and solve them like a solutions architect, how to design solutions for quality attribute like security and scalability and much, much more. Furthermore, SA Magic gives you a structure. It gives you a plan, it gives you a framework, and it also gives you the support and accountability you need for action. Accountability is super important when you need to go from A to B. Now, at the time of publishing this video, only three spots are left. So click the link in the description to reserve your spot. We start mid-February 2023. And the last extension I found to be very helpful for an Azure noob like myself was the Azure Application Insight. Now, this extension allowed me to, you know, view metrics, traces, logs uh, for all my applications, as well as create and manage alerts from within Visual Studio Code. I usually like drilling into the data, uh, so I found Azure's Application Insight to be really enjoyable. However, having the data and insight readily available as your finger trip directly from your code editor is convenient for development scenarios as well. I wanted to take some time to explain to super beginners like I was um, a few years ago, uh, to explain to them how installing these extensions is really, really super simple. You can just open the VS Code extensions view by clicking on the extensions button. As you know, you've seen me do multiple times in this video. So once the extensions view is open, you can just search for the extensions by name and click the install button to add them to VS Code. In conclusion, I want to say that I love Visual Studio Code. I pretty much use it every day. And by installing the right extensions, you know, you can customize it to fit your specific needs. The extensions we've covered in this video are a great starting point for anyone looking to streamline their work as a cloud engineer working with Microsoft Azure. That's it all for today. See you on the next video. Peace out.